And next we have Ed Dowding. So Ed, I've known Ed for a while now, and Ed runs a company called Represent. Represent is a digital democracy tool where you can vote on specific issues. And he's working on a very interesting project called Open Parliament. And Open Parliament is a... No? Okay, I won't give it away. Ed will tell you about it. We're not having that. Just give a warm welcome for Ed Dowding. <laughs> Good evening, and, uh, and thank you um, for having me here tonight. Um, I wasn't expecting to do this. Um, I walked through the door an hour and a half ago, and, and someone had pulled out, and, uh, and, and so I said, yeah, I can do that, that's fine. And what kind of political event would it be without the uh, publicity seeking narcissist with object <laughs> ideas, <laughs> not leaping at the opportunity to stand and talk to a room full of people. So, um, and then, and then, so I then went and prepared a whole bunch of notes, and then, and then Douglas has just gone and said most of them as well, brilliantly, and landed the problem very, very neatly. Uh, so, so bear with me as I, as I sort of uh, wing my way through the next ten minutes. Um, and similarly, if you have any questions, like do do feel free to chip in if I say something particularly stupid. Um, so, I mean, Douglas has, has um, spoken very eloquently about much of the problems and around some of the solutions that we can, that need to blossom to allow us to continue to have an effective and legitimate democracy. He's come at it from a very uh, party or a very political point of view. It's about accomplishing an ideology and about taking a set of ideas, taking them to the people getting support for those ideas and then making something happen. Now that's, that's great because that's what politics is all about. But <coughs> what about the process itself? We divide up our, our civic institutions into a number of different um, <coughs> estates, they're called. Uh, so we've got the, you may have heard of the fourth estate being media, there's also the first three which are executive, judiciary and, and legislature. Um, and so executive being government, legislature being parliament, and judiciary obviously being judiciary. Um, and then the media is supposed to keep an eye on those three and just make sure that they don't screw around too much. And then we don't really have an organized fifth estate for the civic. We don't have a place where we as, as citizens, as people, as individuals can, can coalesce around collectivist ideas. And around, um, it's not quite the word I'm looking for. There's another word, um, but but ideas that are, are greater than the sum, greater than ourselves. There is this tendency with the take back control narrative to think that it is you that is taking back control, and we end up with quite a lot of narcissistic actions coming out of that. But if you look at uh, you know, trust in politics at the moment and trust in the system, whilst so only 47% of the population think that the system is working for them. Broaden that out and say, is the system working full stop? And that falls to 15%. So there are an awful lot of people that are very, very aware that the system just isn't really working for everybody. 85% of people think that the system <coughs> isn't fit for purpose. That leaves us with quite a few legitimacy problems. The question is, what do we do about it? At what point does the civic organize and stand up and say, hang on, we need, to, we need to change how this is going? Because whilst, yes, we created government, and yes, we created these parties, and yes, we coalesce around these things, something in the process itself, something in the rules that they follow, isn't serving us anymore in the way that we originally thought that it should. How do we gain the legitimacy to rewrite the rules that rewrite how government operates? How do we as a civic organize ourselves to take back control as a civic? There will be dissent, we won't agree on a whole bunch of stuff, but how can we organize ourselves more effectively to repurpose and redirect and just guide and steward government towards decisions which work for more people more of the time rather than continuing to essentially present ideas which they sort of hope with the land land with enough people and then reverse them two days later when they discover that they don't. Wouldn't it be better to 
actually treat democracy as a conversation rather than a series of a, a product that you take off the shelf and you go, yeah, I'll have the blue packet because that one seems to do everything that I kind of think I need to do. Or it's framed in the right way or it's got nice, nice, nice wording on it. So the Digital Democracy Commission, which Weber is, um, actually I, I found out about by Weber is, and um, Harry played a good, healthy part in, um, was set up by the Speaker of the House, uh, when was it, 2015, 14? 15. Um, was set up by the Speaker of the House to, um, to suggest how Parliament can innovate and how it can solve some of these problems. And it came out with a whole bunch of recommendations. Um, to increase the volume and quality of interaction between MPs and their constituents, uh, to open up um, select committees uh, so that people were more involved with the work that they do, found it easier to give evidence at the right point to intervene within the legislative system, um, to encourage more young people to participate, to encourage the House of Commons itself to experiment with new ways to enable the public to contribute, and put forward questions to ministers. And then crucially, <laughs> their 18th recommendation was that we believe that the public want the opportunity to have their say in House of Commons debates. We also believe that this will provide a useful resource for MPs and help enhance those debates. We therefore recommend a unique experiment to use the use of digital public discussion forums to inform debates held in Westminster Hall. This innovation might be known as the Cider Chamber or Open House, um, which shows that no one there works in marketing. And, <laughs> If at the end of Parliament it has been successful, then it could be extended into the debate in the main House of Commons chamber itself. So that, those things taken together are huge. Parliament has acknowledged that it has a, this semi-existential threat to its legitimacy, that it is failing in its basic duty of reaching out to the civic, keeping us engaged, helping us understand the relevancy of this organisation, and to continue to support it. So, how much longer have we got? Five minutes? Okay. Um, <laughs> thanks. Um, so, so, that's an opportunity that, uh, that we at Represent want to seize, I guess. Um, so, Represent is a platform for political and issue based engagement. Uh, our vision is just to make democracy better for everybody, for all the stakeholders. And, so how it works is that it's, it's, it's an online thing. You can go to represent.me. Um, anyone can post questions, and each question has a set, uh, has a debate, threaded debate and voting and all sorts of stuff, and uh, analytics. So you can see you know, who wants more cycle lanes near where you live, who's in favor of nuclear power, and you can see, okay, there's a trend for young people, there's old people, there's urban versus rural, there's so on and so on. But because everyone has an account and a profile that you build up, you can start to get quite rich, complex vision of what people want. So you can also, um, uh, you can find out whether people are being consistent, whether we're consistent in our views. You know, I, I, I want the moon and I want it on stage tomorrow. Well, actually you can't have all of those things. There's a trade-off. Current politics doesn't have the method to go back to people and say, so okay, so what do we do about that trade-off? Let's, let's go a little bit deeper into this. So this gives you the opportunity to do it. So, additionally in there, incidentally, um, we, we also pull in census data. So, as regards the filter bubble and who's being reached and who's engaged and who's not engaged, whilst we know that we're not engaging everybody, we also know exactly who is engaged and who's not engaged, which means that you can work with those who are engaged to reach out to the people who aren't. And we've designed it to work locally, nationally, um, even internationally, should the need arise. So, how we're reaching out to people, because one of the other uh, things that the Parliament was very aware of is that people aren't going to come to you. You have to, you have to earn trust and relevancy. So, two things that we've done. Firstly, we've got uh, widgets that you can embed in websites uh, on the issues, so you can like right now, um, Catherine at the back in the yellow here is my co-founder, uh, and she's been <coughs> valiantly churning through all of the manifestos to so that you can um, you can vote on a whole set of things and then work out who 
which party best represents you. That's kind of like a lot of other tools so far, but what this one does is because it's saving your answers, you can, it then serves as a useful data set, a civic open data set, I might add, and there's an API already here in the audience, a civic data set of what people in each constituency want, which means the MP can make more informed decisions. So whoever wins, we can collaborate with that MP and say, well, actually, you know what? 72% of us want this. Like, yeah, we've got first past the post. Yeah, you won, but ultimately, 72% of us don't want this thing. And so you bring more information into the decisions. It also makes it easier to cooperate with your local authorities and local politics, because you can, an awful lot of issues end up at MPs' doors when they just shouldn't be there in the first place. They should be with the local authority. So it's a way to triage that and make sure the data ends up where it needs to go, where it can have the most impact and most effect for you. So, what are we doing with that? Um, come this autumn, we're launching a <coughs> citizens' advisory parliament. So the open house thing, the cyber chamber that they spoke about, we're launching something, we need a better name um, than open house or cyber chamber. We're currently calling it your parliament, uh, which you know does what it says on the can. And wherein we will take um, issues of note and push them out. Uh, to the public who want to vote on them. You can subscribe to different topics and we'll push you things. So if there's an environment bill going through the house and you subscribe to environment, we'll say, hey, here's a question you can ask. Um, the other thing that I've got to say that we do, voting by chatbot. So we've got the widgets to go to where people are at and so they, you can embed it in media and newspapers, but also chatbot. So you can just vote from your phone. You can literally vote from Facebook Messenger. So. When something comes out, you can then answer a whole bunch of questions about the environment. You go, actually, you know what, guys? I'd like your head sort of in this direction. The, so the bill is announced. We push, we push out a bunch of questions. The results are sent to, um, uh, analyzed and sent to the MP. Your MP has the right to reply. can tell you what's going on, uh, what they think, how they're minded to vote. And when they vote, we tell you how they voted. So, and then show you how you compare. Mm. Which then, Last point means that you can do other cool things like say well actually hang on I disagree with you on this topic consistently I want someone else to represent me for this and so that granular topic Delegation that, that Douglas was talking about is something that we do so you can then say well hang on no look for the environment I want I want I want uh, Oliver to represent me for the environment and Oliver can go, actually, well, I don't know enough about it. I know that I know more than that because he's delegated his vote to me. Oliver can then delegate to, say, Friends of the Earth. And all of a sudden, you find yourself with this cascading hierarchy of trust within the system, which allows a more effective citizen lobby on a range of <clears throat> hundreds of different issues. So that is something that we are going to be um, launching this autumn. If there is anybody that we should be collaborating with, that would like to work with us on this. Um, we're already talking with Parliament um, and got buy-in from them on that, um, a number of the other um, uh, voting organisations as well. Uh, so if there are any groups um, that are particularly interested as well, that would be fantastic. Um, and I suppose just to wrap up, it gives us, we, we have this opportunity to, last time I was in this room last week, and there were a couple of people on stage, influencers for a, a, by the ballot. Um, no, it wasn't, it was a Use Your Voice event. And the people in the room had millions of followers. There are, only a, there are about a million people as members of the political parties in the UK. So the idea that they have this legitimacy and this control, it is, it is paper thin. The opportunity to rework it and actually take control and take control with a with a civic purpose, it's it's literally in our hands. Thank you very much. <laughs>